What's going on guys? Neil with the Charcoal King. So today is a pan seared filet in your cast iron skillet. But before we do that, I want you guys just to look at this. Mmm, fresh haircut. The, uh, what we call, oh, the microwave queen. That's my wife. She cut my hair during all this uh, virus and all that stuff. They're still locked down, so I got a nice fresh haircut. I think she did pretty good. I did good. Not bad. It ain't bad when you wear a hat. But let's get back to it. <laughs> so the pan seared filet, very basic, very simple, but with just massive flavor. Stay tuned. So how are we gonna do the filet? Well, let's start off by talking about how important it is for this right here. Not to mention the fact that you just spent your hard earned money on a nice piece of a uh, thick filet. But this is where the magic happens. This is probably the most important part of making this whole dish. Uh, very simple, um, but very, very easy to mess up if you're just not paying attention to the temperatures of your meat. We're gonna have the, uh, the meat's been thawing out, not thawing out, uh, it's been out for 30 minutes. We started at two o'clock. It's very important to bring your meat up to room temperature. Why? Because when you're cooking, especially inside the house, Smoke is not a bad thing. Regardless of what the smoke detectors tell you, smoke is not a bad thing. Heat, and a lot of it, sometimes is really, really good. And these air vents, or air fans, that circulate the air are not the world's greatest. So what does that mean? When you bring your meat up to room temperature, your, let's say your temperature in your refrigerator is about, what, 37, 40 degrees, somewhere through there. So if you can, I think the inside the temperature of our house, let's say it's 72 degrees. So that's a good 30 degrees difference, plus or minus right there. So that's 30 degrees that your steak does not have to sit in your pan and smoke and smoke and smoke. Plus, once it's up to room temperature, when you sear it on both sides, we're gonna finish it in. I love this little guy. It's like the thing that we use almost every single day. This is where my wife has become the microwave queen. I, I can cook in the toaster oven. Yeah, press start and that, that bad boy's ready to go. Although, My, oh, frozen pancakes, perfect in there. Chicken patties for the grills, whatever. I can, I can, I mean, that's something I can cook. I can get a chicken patty out of we the need freezer. A, we need to franchise <laughs> your name. What's it called? Your name, Microwave Queen, right next to Charcoal King. <laughs> All right, so we got, our, we got our stove preheated. We're gonna season our steaks. Um, if you guys have followed my videos, the, uh, the other steak video that I've got going on is uh, the barbecue steak video. And I'm gonna link that one right up here to the top. This is not the time to do barbecue sauce. When you put barbecue sauce in your pan, it's gonna have a higher chance of burning. And that's not what we want. We do want the, the heat to be high, but we do not want the, uh, the steak to burn. There's a big difference. Um, I see our cast iron skillets is uh, smoking right now, so that's a good sign. You guys have to bear with me. I am gonna turn the fan on, on low. And I hope that's okay, you guys still hear my voice. So today we're just gonna do simple salt, fresh cracked pepper, and of course my Cavender's seasoning. I love that thing on steaks. And we are gonna season this. You're gonna see this one's the tail end of the filet. Went to the garden today for the first time. Got some, uh, uh, fresh thyme, some fresh rosemary. Shoot a couple birds out of the blackberry bush. And bad boys, we ain't gonna have blackberries this year because all the birds in there. I already put salt in that. All right, little calendars. It's important if you have a thick filet to go ahead and season all sides, not just top and bottom, because it is a big chunk of meat. You're, you know, you're basically cooking, I hate to say it, but it's almost like a small roast. There's a lot of surface area to be missed when you don't do it like that. Rule number one, do what? not add your butter now. You hear me? Butter is fat and butter will burn. So what we're gonna do, bring it over, a little bit of olive oil, and instead of putting the olive oil in the pan, I'm gonna put olive oil on the meat. Okay. And we know our pan's super hot. Anytime you're dealing with cast iron, you've always got a little paper towel somewhere. And here we go. Okay. 
That's what you want. That nice sound. Yes, what were you going to say? Um, what is around the meat? Butcher's flan. So, when we got these fillets, they were oblong. Uh, not every fillet comes completely round. Uh, once you get to the tail or the head, the actual pieces of fillet are different sizes and different variations. So when you take butcher's flan, all you do is just wrap it around, pull it tight, and tie whatever knot you want to in it. And the point is, it groups the meat together, and when it does that, it makes it easier way to uh, to cook your meat because it keeps all your meat even, uh, uniform, and that's very important. You wouldn't want like a thick piece on one side and a thin piece on the other, especially when you're dealing with a high quality meat. So. We're just gonna let this go. We're gonna sear it. I'm just gonna, let's see, push it down just a little bit. And I want you guys to see that smoke. I'm telling you, it's not a bad thing to have smoke. We're gonna leave it on here for about two and a half minutes, probably two on this one, two and a half minutes on this one. This is a big portion right here. That, that bad boy's a, that's a thick one right there. But that's what you want. Obviously, the thinner meat that you would have, the less time on each side. Um, as you can see, this is, I don't know about that thick, so two knuckles for me, and one side's two knuckles, and the other side's probably about a knuckle and a half, and that's the best I could do with butcher flan on it. Sometimes when you have an oblong piece like this that's not necessarily uh, perfect on all sides, you could always cut this up in cubes and seared a little bit of cubes and have like mushrooms and steak or something like that. So we're just gonna let this go. We've got an oven, let's say what temperature? Oh, 425. We have our oven on 425. Um, luckily enough that my 10 inch large cast iron skillet will fit in that oven completely. If you don't have a tabletop or a countertop oven, uh, you definitely use your uh, your stove for that. So why would we use a stove when we're talking about the uh, the skillet because a skillet, you don't want your skillet to do everything okay there's a difference between like really intense heat on the bottom versus that what heat ambient ambient heat ambient heat's going to come around it's a softer cook even though we're going to have it at 425 the air's going to circulate and it's going to be really really fantastic let's talk about something real quick while our sex are going on i do want to mention this to the people we're starting our website right now. We're in the process of getting it going. And on my website, I'm gonna have a list of uh, probably two different categories. Things that you might need and things that you've got to have in the kitchen. If you watch this video so far, or any of my videos, temperature is very important. Whether the meat temperature or whether the, uh, the unit, you know, whether I use a two zone uh, temperature set up on my grill or even searing it here, and then moving it to the oven. Either way, we're balancing temperature all the time. I cannot stress to you the importance of having a good thermometer. No matter what it costs or what it looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip these. I'm oil them a little bit. Let's oil both sides. And this is a great way to season a cast iron pan too. Look at that. That beautiful dark crust. We're gonna have to be careful with yours. This one we've done a lot sooner than mine. We're still not gonna add the butter yet. Since this is so thick, I'm just gonna give it a couple more minutes right before we add the butter. I just wanted to get on this tangent real quick about the, uh, the thermometers. These two come together. We can learn about that later. This is probably at a $7 thermometer. It's not the world's greatest. Uh, this is an instant read thermometer. You just open it up, it automatically comes on, you can check your probes. This is probably, these two are the most important kitchen gadgets that you can have. When you're trying to reach a desired temperature in your filet, you can guess all you want to. And I'm here to tell you, this nonsense right here is for the birds. I do not believe in it one, one iota. If you don't know what I'm talking about, people say you touch your thumb together with each finger and the further you go, the tighter it gets and the more it feels like well done, or let's start up here, rare, medium rare, uh, medium and well done. Ah, that's the biggest crock I've ever heard in my life. The point is because of the difference, the difference in your meat, 
whether it be choice, select, I mean, a, a select choice from, or even if you go like high quality. So way, 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 way different. You want to know what the temperature for meat is? The thermometer is the way to go. So we're going to shoot, the target range is going to be about 115 to 120 degrees. And what? Enough of the Is tangent. that medium rare? That is medium rare for us, yes. We like medium rare. We do like medium rare. All right. Enough of that. I just wanted to get that out there because I think that's so important to have if you're at this stage in your cooking process. All right, so what are we going to do? I've got to be really careful in here because I'm going to take yours out for a second. You guys see these brown bits on the bottom? That's perfect. That's flavor, flavor, flavor. Look at that. See? So what we're going to do, right before we move it to the oven, I'm going to add this pat of garlic. I'm going to say about... You mean butter. Oh, yeah, yeah, butter. I'm going to say a good tablespoon of butter. I'm going to turn that off. Let's just move it off the heat a little bit. Now, the quickest way to cool down a pan is not to leave the pan on the stove, what you've been cooking with. The easiest way to cool down a cast iron pan is move it completely off the heating source. God, we're just bathing in that butter. Mm. We're going to add our garlic. That's about a good mound tablespoon of, of garlic. Fresh garlic is perfectly fine. We're going to add our herbs. We've got a sprig of thyme. Two sprigs of thyme and two small baby rosemary twigs that we just picked from the garden. Move that around a little bit. And I personally love Worcestershire sauce. I'm not doing it to change the flavor. I'm only doing it to enhance the flavor. I love what it does when it's in the oven and all that butter has a chance to uh, soften that garlic. And I'm not using a lot. I would probably say one to two tablespoons at max. So what we've done now, we've created like pan juices. We've created a pan sauce something to uh, bathe our fillets in when they come out. All right, we're gonna add yours back. God, can you smell that now? Can you smell the difference? I do, it smells really good. It does. It smells really, really, really good. All right. Mm. We're gonna pop this in here. I would say probably a good two and a half to three minutes. And when we come back, we're gonna put it back on the stove. We're gonna baste it. We're gonna take them out. We're gonna cut them. You're gonna see that beautiful medium rare. And then we're gonna put that pan sauce all over top of it. And then that butter sauce is gonna start drooling down your mouth. See you in a second. Just like we we're talking about earlier, the importance of a thermometer. So it's been three minutes exactly for us. So I'm gonna take it out. And I don't think it's done. I think this filet is so thick. What temperature were we shooting for? 115? Mm -hmm. We got a good ways to go. And yours is lopsided, so I'm gonna hold it up like that. Let's see what we get in yours. So yours is getting close. So you see yours already at 100. So yours is 20 degrees more. And that's the importance of a, th a good thermometer. I mean, you've really got to know what temperature you're shooting at. You definitely don't want to spend that much money and guess. All right, so I've taken my wife's, the microwave queen out a little bit earlier because we knew that the uh, portion size didn't necessarily fit my uh, massive filet. Um, but I'd say we took this one out about five minutes early. We're just going to check it. I know hers is right. Let's see what we got. If we're shooting for 115, plus or minus, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Look at all that sauce smell. That garlic that's caramelized, that Worcestershire sauce. Mm. Let's see, what are we looking for? 115? Ah. We're pretty close. 106, 107, we're gonna let it rest. All right. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, you have two options. You can pull out earlier, let's say about 10 degrees, just like I did early. And the cast iron pan itself, that's why I love using cast iron. That's really one of the major reasons. Uh, longevity and heat retention is the fact that this filet sitting in here in this atmosphere right here 
will continue to cook the ambient heat um, all that stuff you can let it rest in this stuff right here if you take it right out of the oven and take this and put it right on a plate it's really going to slow down the cooking it's, it's exactly the idea of of what we did earlier taking the cast iron pan and moving it off the heat to cool it down really fast so that's what's happening right now so as long as it stays in its area it's going to continue to cook and we're going to get right there at that special temperature that we were looking for mm. so i'm going to put my wife's back in and then while it's resting and this butter is cooling down we're going to bathe it while the pores in the meat are open. Mm. For this butter sauce. If you guys could just smell this, mm -hmm. adding those aromatic herbs. Oh yeah, look at it. Oh yeah. And you wanna do this while your meat's hot. While your meat's hot, you got all your pores open. So when you're doing this, every time you do this, it just fills in all those pores and makes it just juicier and it picks up that flavor that you wouldn't working so hard to get. All right, we'll give that about five minutes. We're gonna let it rest. And then the big B-I-T-E bite. I love my finishing bite because I just can't wait. It takes me eight hours to film this. It takes me five seconds to eat that thing. So stay tuned. <laughs> Silent drum roll. That's my drum roll. It's time. Well, the aromas that it just gives off like, mm, hard to imagine. All right, we're just gonna go in here and take our little- uh, Butcher's twine. Butcher's twine, thank you. Off. Do you have to use butcher's twine? You don't. I mean, if, if you've got a uniform fillet, then I'd highly recommend not doing it. But the only reason why I did it is because it looked so oblong. It was more like a like a big knuckle with about three fingers. What happens is once you squish it together and butcher twine it, then you've got more of a uniform uh, cut of meat. And then everything cooks more evenly. You get a bigger surface to brown, uh, to caramelize on the top. So throw these over here. Ooh! Let's use our slicing knife. What do you think? All right. Back to basics. You ready? I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh, perfect. Yep, yep. That's what we're looking for. And I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do today. I normally don't do this, but I've tasted this pan sauce that we've created with this beef and the garlic, the thyme, the rosemary, and a little Worcestershire sauce. And it is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it really just elevates a great piece of meat to the next level. I'll help it out a little bit. Oh, yeah. mm. Look how juicy that looks. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, this is, this is about as good as it gets. It was a high quality piece of beef to start with. And uh, that's what, well, that's what happens when you, when you do it like that. All right, we're gonna take this pan juices right here. And a little bit goes a long way. You work so hard and pay so much money for a good piece of beef, you definitely don't wanna change the flavor. You're just looking to enhance it. So this butter, mm. There we go. Ha! Mm. Moment of truth, moment of truth, I get to eat it. Oh, I want a bite. No. Nope. Hey, when you're here and I'm there and we're doing this for you, <laughs> then you can try your your popcorn. <laughs> that is about the extent of my culinary ability, popcorn. Oh, oh, look at that. Mm. I mean, it's just so soft. I don't even know. Let's see. Here we go. Can you cut it with a spoon? Yep. Look like I didn't know what I was doing. I'm trying to be... <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man. Mm. Home run. Cut the video. Hey. Cut the video right Time now. Time to eat. We gotta eat now. Oh, I do want to say this. Hey, look at me. 
Oh man, baby, that's good. Mm. I did want to mention this. If you guys haven't seen the video of the sea scallops, we basically just did the same exact thing, okay? The cast iron pan is really the star of the show. I know, I know about the meat, but trust me, you take the meat out of the refrigerator, and it's the same method. So if you're just learning how to cook, now you've got two different items, a, a, a seafood and now a meat in your repertoire. Good word. Repertoire, yes. Yep, yep. <laughs> of what to create at home, okay? So for the sea scallops, high heat, very fast, bring it up to room temperature, same thing with this. High heat, let the meat do its job in the cast iron pan, and you can't go wrong. Use that thermometer. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound that notification button. I look forward to seeing you guys down the road. Peace. Give me another bite. Oh. Hey. Mm. You have to charge a mission for this thing. <laughs> mm. Cut.